before we start, I'll just show you a few things that we see on a daily basis. These are worn bushes on a wishbone setup, and this is because the vehicle was severely overloaded. Result is wandering steering, as you can see here. It's front axle, yep. Yeah, not too good, is it? But it's repairable, uh, and this is as well. This was a uh, cause uh, for concern because we couldn't get the wheel off, or the tire fitter couldn't get the wheel off, and this was because of an accident. The vehicle actually crashed into the side of this lorry, bending the wheel up and knocking the tire off, which uh, you can see actually the side guards uh, intact, but the rear bumper, as the vehicle carried on, <laughs> took the rear bumper off like this. So, yeah, span set, of course, this is a, an HGV thing. If you have a spare span set, it's always good just in case you need to lash something up. So, the preferred tool, of course, in our workshop is the oxygen acetylene, and the only real way that we could get the wheel nuts undone is to cut the bent piece out, yes, like so, and then the wheel could be removed and replaced. Yep, this is the stuff that you probably will never see in your lifetime or you won't have to deal with it but the more you get involved with motor vehicles the more things happen so look nice new wheel there this is what happens when a vehicle regens or diesel regens a dpf it turns the soot into ash unfortunately sometimes it can do it too much there's too much ash content and then it will uh, put a warning light on and say there's too much soot content that's why failure uh, is that tire like a fucking banana? She might have a bulge in it. Oh, it's got to have a bulge or something. Isn't it? Hang on, let's just have a look from that side. Well, it's been around a bit quicker. Yeah, it's got a bulge in it. Yeah, it's got a bulge in it. Yeah, if you watch the side here, you watch it. Yeah. Stay. Do it again, do it again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wrong, fucked. Is there anything wrong with the suspension setup? Top though? mount bearing is fucking notchy as hell. Oh, no really. That's that's impact. That is, it's caused that. Right then guys, hello and welcome back to this mini video series that I'm making for you now. This is about building a comprehensive toolkit for your vehicle, okay? Now I've watched a few preppers um, talk about what they have for the vehicles and it doesn't take much to work out what their skill levels are. Because what they'll do is they'll buy a socket set and a few screwdrivers from a uh, an outlet like, I don't know, a screw fix for instance, or Halfords in the UK, and they think they're safe. Well, generally they probably have a vehicle that doesn't need much work on it, but... When they go to the toolkit, they suddenly realize they don't have the right size socket, for instance, or the ratchet isn't good enough. They don't have a stout enough bar and they break sockets because they're the wrong type or the sockets won't fit. And it is, um, it's a done thing when you have a good toolbox that you have a selection of tools that you can get around these problems because you would have done that through experience. But if you're a novice to it, then you're going to have to start from the beginning and assess what your skill level is and what you can actually do, yeah? So um, there are three major factors that are involved with building a toolkit is A, your vehicle and uh, the fixings it has and the repair requirements it might need. B, is your skill level, yeah? If you're uh, fairly competent, then you won't be watching this video or if you need a little few insights, then that's okay. C is the environment that it's going to work in because that will dictate uh, how much of a repair job you can do on the vehicle and how uh, how you can move your vehicle afterwards, yeah? And then there's a minor factor as well, which is space in your vehicle. If you have a small vehicle like this, then you don't want many tools. The larger the vehicle, the larger the tools, and that, that is a rule of thumb, okay? Motor vehicles do break down mainly mainly it's to do with maintenance if the vehicle hasn't been maintained properly um components wear in the wrong way and then suddenly you'll get a fault and the faults can be anything from steering to engines not running properly or you have a wheel bearing failure or the brakes <laughs> stop working or are very inefficient yeah so home maintenance is is vitally important if you have your own vehicle you're either going to do it yourself maintain it yourself or you're going to pay a garage to do it if you're the king of the road obviously you want to employ a person like myself to maintain your vehicle to a high standard 
or if you don't trust guys like myself then you'll do it yourself won't you or if you're skint yeah um i generally do all my maintenance because i can and it saves me a bob or two plus i got all the tools yeah but it's still an investment nonetheless if you have a vehicle where you need to buy specialist tools um, to conduct repairs or maintenance okay so we do need to talk this about this over time on this uh, video channel but what we want to concentrate is just getting a basic tool kit together okay for things that might happen out on the road all right so I'll tell you a story. This is I've got to tell you a story. We've got to have a story, haven't we? Yeah. Um, I had a Land Rover, which uh, was that was quite old, 1980s model. It had an accelerator cable from accelerator to the uh, injector pump, diesel. Yeah, and that snapped while I was uh, out uh, the back of beyond. So I didn't have an accelerator cable, and the only thing I could do was take the boot laces out of my boots, tie them together tie them to the pump and then have a uh, pulley system to pull it to accelerate yeah and uh, get home that's all i could do to get the spares this sometimes is what you are going to have to resort to and other times you can do quick repairs but hopefully if you've done uh, regular maintenance and you inspect your vehicle and you know what condition your vehicle is in then you should be okay you should be able to plan your maintenance but then there are always those surprises components do fail alternator belts uh, the pk type belts which are the poly v belts for instance they generally don't go and they last a long time but the components that they run the the uh, the adjusters uh, the slack adjuster on them and maybe a major component could actually fail but usually they give you quite a lot of warning so you can go and repair those before you were stuck out somewhere and having to repair it but there is always that chance it might throw a belt for a reason and you have to put another the belt on or the belt might split uh, worst case scenario yeah um repairs on the side of the road are generally they're generally small things they're very simple things whether it's a, a puncture for instance light bulbs for instance if your headlights go out or you blow a fuse and you have a short because the wiring is uh, um, crushed somewhere that they're, they're quite common things um <coughs> sometimes you might have a component failure uh, like an egr valve or something like that that might put the vehicle into limp mode and usually it's the type of thing you want to to, to get the vehicle home and to have it repaired or get it straight to a workshop if not then you strip the component down with the vehicle in situ um, take it somewhere get your parts come back and then replace it yeah that gives you actually time best way obviously is to repair the vehicle because uh, our roads are very very busy we don't abandon vehicles for very long um you get a, a recovery um contract with i don't know the rac the aa or in america that's the aaa isn't it the american automobile association that way you can have your vehicle taken back to where it uh, needs to be yeah i had a head gasket fail in france and i managed to get over the channel which luckily we only did 30 miles which was slow going and topping it up and uh, having the water chucked out got over back to the uk and then called the automobile association out which uh, diagnosed it was a head gasket i knew it was a head gasket it was gone it was uh, pushing the, the coolant out then i got a recovery back home which is about 150 miles from dover to uh, to uh, king's lynn yeah the only way i could do it otherwise that would be a strip down which i could do it's 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 very within my uh, capabilities to do that but you might not be able to do that you might not know what's involved and uh, it's it's too much of an ordeal for you now, this is why i say you have to assess your skill level first of all most preppers generally are prepared for one thing or another and there are very few preppers that are mechanics that are prepared to to do their vehicles on the side of the road because they know it's easier just to get it back to a workshop and get it done yeah in between working times at lunch break and after work yeah you know what i'm saying so uh, yeah it's it's a thing where first of all you really do have to assess your skill level and then we'll go from there yeah and what i'd advise first of all is to have a look at your vehicle and go a little bit in depth with it okay now 
I have two ramps which I can uh, take the vehicle onto and usually I do an oil change on it and I might have a quick look underneath or if it's uh, an wheels on job then I can use those without using axle stands it's a quicker way of doing it or I have four axle stands in my set in my garage with one trolley jack to lift the vehicle up so I can get all the wheels off the ground take all the wheels off and do what I need to do yeah generally it's inspecting you do need to take wheels off to do that so you have to have some sort of equipment and I'm probably in the same boat as you are I have a garage which I can't really fit the car in and I'm pushed for space okay and a lot of people will be like that if they live in city environments but they can do certain jobs on their cars can't they or they can go and uh, borrow a mate's uh, uh, flat space out in the garden somewhere yeah and uh, get work done otherwise you have to work in a, in a safe uh, safe way okay so the first thing i'm going to advise now vernier calipers okay these are for measuring okay um things like uh diameters of hoses and pipes yeah which you really need to take notice of you have to notice the clips and the fixings that you have especially around your fuel system how things are attached okay you need to know how to uh uh, be able to get your fan belt off for instance this vehicle I've already shown you you have to take the wheel off and get the inner wheel arch out to get the fan belt off yeah in an emergency or just for regular uh, repairs yeah <laughs> uh, which is the easiest way to do it because it's really hard to do it from the top of the engine there's no space in there whatsoever okay there is a video on that on this channel yeah you can use this to measure nuts and uh, nuts and bolt heads as well. You measure across the flats. That will give you the socket size that you need and the spanner sizes you need, okay? But you've also got to notice the aperture size and any recesses where these nuts and bolts are because if they're closed, um, some of the sockets I'd advise maybe for you to use might be too thick and you might need a thin-walled socket, okay? So this is the type of picture you're building up of your vehicle. So if you're capable of doing suspension um, repairs on your vehicle, then you can measure all your suspension components, okay? Just get a rough idea what fixings they are, what what um, drivers you need, because it's either going to be uh, something like metric or it's going to be a, a spline drive, okay? And some of the sizes are very, very odd. 16 mil, 15 mil, 20 mil, and 21 mil on cars. Commercial vehicles are a little bit different, but you have things like 26 mil sockets, 22, 24, for instance. Okay, um, brake calipers are held on in all sorts of different ways and uh, magical fixings, if you like. And the, the manufacturers do this for ease of um, uh, putting things together in the factory, and they don't always think about the person who's got to go and repair afterwards. But you need to observe all of these, any obstructions that are in the way. Okay, so you need to spend time with your car understanding your car most people already know how to work on the vehicles and they know what tools they need but there are a few that might not have enough of an insight okay which means that they'll get to a job they realize they haven't got the tools and they have to go and buy them okay this is why i'm saying when i look at somebody who says oh i've just got a socket set from from walmart okay that's a socket set from walmart but does it have all the odd sizes in it and what size does it go up to does it accommodate all the nuts and bolts on your vehicle that you might need to undo yeah and do you have stout enough equipment to be able to undo those without any trouble or are you going to be ending up in tears because all the tools that you've got are weak yeah these are all the factors that you need to consider and it yeah it does take a little bit of time to work it out Things like the Haynes Workshop Manual will give you the torque settings for the, the nuts and the bolts, the fixings, and that will give you an idea what tool you need. The front hub on this vehicle, and most front-wheel drive vehicles, they're done up very, very tight. 300, 380 newton meters, 460 newton meters, for instance, and you need a very long bar to undo them if you need to remove a drive shaft or remove the hub so you can take the hub off and take it to a garage and get the wheel bearing changed, things like that, although that is a little bit extreme most components give you warning yeah wheel bearings give you warning they'll start making noises clutches will uh, give you warning they'll start slipping before they fail so you should never get yourself in a situation where you know you've got to change your clutch on the side of the road because that is an ordeal in itself yeah that's a home job yeah 
Um, things like uh, drive belt pulleys, things like that, they will squeal, they will make noises before they fail and if you're not aware of it they'll fail and then it's going to kick a belt off and you're, you're in big trouble then aren't you because then you've got to source the parts. You can't carry all the parts for your vehicle can you? So you are looking to do simple jobs that will get you out of trouble yeah. One of the major things, uh, especially with engine malfunctions, is usually sensors, okay? Now, a vehicle will go into limp mode, for instance, if a sensor or a component is failing and the emissions are not acceptable, okay, that will get you home. That will kick up a light that reduces your power, which says get to a workshop and get it sorted okay that will give you that opportunity lorries will give you a warning but they will give you full power for uh, something like 15 hours yeah on, on modern vehicles anyway which means if you go into limp mode after then that means you've ignored all the warnings yeah which shouldn't happen but lighter commercial vehicles and lighter cars they don't usually do that okay because people ignore the uh, the warning lamps on their dashboard until they have trouble don't they <laughs> The one sensor that will stop a vehicle dead in its tracks is the crankshaft sensor, which is either on the gearbox on the flywheel, which reads the flywheel, uh, the speed of the engine, or it will be on the front of the vehicle near the pulley. There'll be some type of arrangement there. So you need to know where that is and get one and know how to change it. Because sometimes, and I'll tell you about this, you get something called heat sink and crankshaft sensors are very sensitive to that. So what happens is the car runs, you stop it, the heat of the engine goes up when it's static, it then affects the crankshaft sensor and you can't start until the vehicle's cooled down, yeah? I'm sure a couple of you experienced that. Sometimes the crank sensor fails completely and I've had this on this vehicle before I owned it. It just said, no, that's it, that's enough. And we had to have this recovered and then I had to work out what it was, yeah? So uh, generally a crankshaft sensor is the one thing if it fails that will kill the engine whereas other sensors will give you time to get to a workshop yeah so remember that one so <laughs> another task while you're walking about with your vernier calipers yeah is to go and check this out on your vehicle yeah and find out where it is if you have a modern vehicle because almost everything does now doesn't it there are very few vehicles that don't have electronics do they yeah Okay. The other thing, just as a quick one, go and find out what fuses you have, uh, how many fuse boxes you have in your vehicle, and then find out whether it has any uh, maps with it, a designation. If not, they'll either be in the handbook or they'll be in the workshop manual, but you, what you'll have to do, because if you blow a fuse or you have it's sometimes an accident, somebody will tap you at the front end and that might um, short a wire out you'll have fuses blowing constantly and then you'll have to find the short and I will teach you how to do that yeah, and then you can um, repair that short and then put another fuse in but if you don't know which uh, system it is then you might have troubles with that at the end of the day this is your vehicle and the the more you work with it the more problems you have the more you actually get to know but of course it all comes down to being reliable is is maintaining your vehicle so we'll talk about uh simple problems first of all and how to get around them how to build a, a simple tool uh, kit up and then we'll go to do inspections and building more of a tool kit up for your vehicle to do maintenance and do regular maintenance on your vehicle that makes it more reliable doesn't it yeah so all this is yet to come guys and uh, yeah anyway i shall see you in the next video have a good one and uh, yeah okay above all guys stay prepped all right see you later i'll go back to work now yeah.